So we finally have Gemini 2.0. This came after the one year anniversary of Gemini. So I think Google has come a really long way with this model. They have introduced a lot of features in the past couple of months and even newer models to experiment with. But this announcement is a little bit different. So what they are aiming for here is a model that can help jumpstart the multi-model agentic era, which means you can now build really complex agents with the Gemini model as this model can now support all kinds of capabilities and multimodalities. So let's get into the specifics of the announcement. What they're announcing is Gemini 2.0 Flash. Okay, it comes with stronger performance compared to Gemini 1.5 Flash. You can use it via the API and you can also use it within Google AI Studio. I'm going to show you some examples within Google AI Studio just to show you some of the capabilities that come with Gemini 2.0 Flash. So better performance, you can check out the benchmarks results here. But one interesting example that they highlighted here is the spatial understanding. So what this means is that now you can give Gemini an image and you can prompt it to extract whatever items you want to extract from an image and you can tell it how you want the labeling to happen. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm here within Google AI Studio and we have a bunch of features that have been introduced with this particular launch. Okay, we have the model here, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. All right, so what can you do with this model? So as I mentioned, we have this visual spatial understanding capability. So where can you actually test that besides the API? So you can go to the starter apps right here and you can play around with this. So you can see here, this is one of the options. There is also video analyzer where the model will analyze the video. There's also a map explorer as well, which is a really cool feature, but you can experiment with those. I'm gonna try this particular one here just to explore some of the capabilities with Gemini. And you can find all the examples here, these apps within GitHub. So they have a GitHub repository where they are uploading some of these projects. So let's go to spatial understanding. And this was the example that was highlighted in the blog announcement. So let's just use that. So we see we have items here. Show me the positions of the items. How do you want to label each one with? What do you want to label each one with? I'm not going to select anything, but you can select something here. I'm just going to say send. And you can see now this model is interacting and it's extracting the information. So you can see this is the bounding box, right? 2D bounding box. And it gives you all the different points. Then it gives you a label, orange origami fox. Now for the label, you could have chosen maybe a different description. You can say something like two words or something like that. However you want the label to be, that's something that you can customize. So that's really nice and that's optional, right? So that's really cool. You can see here the shadow, the shadow for armadillo, and you can see the orange origami armadillo, and you can see the fox one right here. So that's pretty cool, it's very nice. You can experiment also with the different examples down here as well. You can upload your own image. This is powerful. This is something I'll be experimenting with a lot in the coming days, because I do want to build agentic systems that have multimodal capabilities. And I think this is going to be one of the main features that I'll be using Gemini 2.0 Flash for. Let's continue with more of the announcement details here. So this one says new output modalities. So what does this mean? So now Gemini 2.0 Flash features native text to speech. So you can basically do text to audio here and provides developers fine grained control over not just what the model says, but how it says it with a choice of eight high quality voices. This is so powerful. I mean, you can see that there are entire companies that are building this type of features. And because Gemini, and this is something I've been saying for some time, has been trained natively with multimodal capabilities, it will be able to do these things really well. And so I think Gemini and what Google has done with Gemini in particular, taking that decision of making this model multi-model from the ground up is gonna result in this type of experiences and this type of capabilities. As the model gets better, more of these modalities will be enabled. And so the native audio output is no surprise to me. You can also do native image output. So what does this even mean? So it says that 2.0 Flash can natively generate images and support conversational multi-turn editing so you can build on previous outputs and refine them. 
So let's go to the stream real time feature here. There is talk to Gemini, show Gemini, share your screen. So these are the different features. Here we can also do some kind of voice interaction with Gemini as well. These two, I'm going to touch on these in a follow up video, but I'm going to focus on this talk to Gemini because I think this is really awesome. You can also choose the voice. Yeah, so here are some options for the voice and then the output format. Obviously, I'm going to generate audio because that's what I'm interested in here. And obviously, that's the model here. There are some features like tools. Those are not so important for this demo, but I'm just going to go and click on Talk to Gemini. Hi. Hi there. How can I help you today? What's your name? I am Gemini, a large language model. It's nice to meet you. So I'm interested in learning different languages. I have a passion for that. Can you help me? Yes, I can help you with that. I can provide you with information on different languages, their grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. I can also offer resources for learning languages, such as online courses, okay. apps. Okay, so can you teach me a little bit of Italian? Sure, I can do that. Let's start with some basic Italian phrases. Would you like to learn greetings or something yes. else? Yes, let's start with greetings. Okay, let's begin with greetings. A common way to say, Hello in Italian is ciao. You can use it for both hello and goodbye. Another way to say hello is buongiorno, which is used during the daytime, and buonasera, which is used in the evening. Buongiorno. That's a great start. You can also say come stai, which means how are you? A typical response would be bene grazie, which translates to fine, thank you. Can you let me know how to say the little boy is playing marbles? Certainly. The phrase, the little boy is playing marbles in Italian is il bambino santa giocando a biggie. Il bambino santa giochi. Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat? Yes. The correct sentence is il bambino santa giocando a biggie. The pronunciation is il bambino santa di j o h can do a b li. Il bambino santa di onta biggie. It sounds like you're almost there. It's Il bambino santa giocando a biglie. Il bambino santa giocando a biglie. That's much better. It's il bambino santa giocando a biglie. You're making great progress. Il bambino santa giocando a biglie. Very good. That is very close. So here is an example of the native image output that was uploaded to the Google main YouTube account. And I would like to show you this because obviously we don't have this capability yet. This is only available for testers, early testers. So let's play it. These are examples of native image output in Gemini 2.0. Gemini 2.0 can now natively generate images as part of your conversation. Let's say you want to imagine how it might look to turn this car into a convertible. With today's AI tools, this takes a lot of work. You might have to manually mask out this roof area or write a really complex prompt. We brought this image into AI Studio and sent it to the new experimental Gemini 2.0 flash model. This is a real-time screen capture, and all the prompts you'll see in this video are things that early testers can now try. And this is the entire prompt we gave it, turn this car into a convertible. And it generated this image. Here they are side by side. Notice how it successfully modified the car, but also managed to keep the rest of the image consistent. This is difficult in many AI tools that use separate models. So this is really amazing, right? You can see that there is a lot of consistency here. Although the quality doesn't look the same as the original image, there is still a lot of consistency. Obviously, these models are getting much better at image generation. But the fact that you can just convert one image or one object into another and keep the consistency is pretty amazing. And this is why this particular model is very exciting. Note that these two capabilities are available to early testers only with wider rollout expected next year. Anyway, so we're going to jump here to native tool use. So this is the other capability. And this one, there's another example of this as well within Google AI Studio. So let's take a look at what this is about. And in particular here, if you see it, right, the foundational capability for building agentic experiences so tool use is one of the main capabilities that unlock agentic workflows. So you can use it to call tools natively like Google search, code execution, and other third-party functionalities. So let's take a look at an example of this within Google AI Studio. We go to starter apps. We go to Map Explorer. I guess it's about exploring map. 
and I can choose a different option here. So let's say I will choose ancient. I'm interested in ancient history. So let's look at that. So it says Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, a site with massive stone pillars that predate pottery, metal, and even the wheel built over 11,000 years ago by hunter gatherers. And so that's awesome. And I know about this one. I've seen it in a lot of documentaries, but you can see here that there is something that looks almost like a function call. And in fact, that's really what's powering this application. And you can see that it says location and it says Gobekli Tepe, Turkey. And then there is some caption down here as well. So this, I guess, is the function. And this is why we're getting this entire piece of information here. Now we can try with different parts here, like remote, for instance. And again, it does the same thing, right? It interacts, I guess, with this map feature and it's able to gather information about a particular place, and then it can recommend the place, right? So this is the recommendation here. So definitely there is some function calling going on here in addition to interaction with this particular map. So that was just a simple example of the function calling capabilities, and you can combine that with anything, right? You can combine that with some real-time capability, some real-time interactions, and so on. Something they mentioned here is that multiple searches can be run in parallel, leading to improved information retrieval by finding more relevant facts from multiple sources simultaneously and combining them for accuracy. Learn more in the native tool video or start building from a notebook. So there's a nice example here that was shown. So do check out this video here. It does have a nicer example of how a user is interacting and is generating this entire chart right here. And it does it via this function calling capability. So this is another example of how this works with different capabilities of Gemini. So there's this multimodal live API. We showed you an example of that. There are a couple more examples here that you can try. So there's like video streaming, audio streaming, uh, share your cameras or screens. Those are examples that you can try out. And I'm not going to focus on that too much. That's something that you can try out on your own. And that's pretty much the announcement here. Besides that, there are lots of examples. There's so many announcements and examples and videos. Do check it out to get an understanding of what's possible with this Gemini 2.0 model and what's coming really, right? So there's some capabilities that are already enabled, but then there are a bunch of them that are also coming in the pipeline. They are announcing also some agents as well, which are powered by Gemini 2.0. So as an example, there's this Jules, which is an experimental AI powered code agent that will use Gemini 2.0. You can offload Python and JavaScript coding task. Uh, it can also work asynchronously and integrated within your GitHub workflow. So I'm happy to see that Google is also getting into this arena of building these coding agents. So it seems a lot of companies are doing that, right? With You can see there's Microsoft with GitHub Copilot. There is OpenAI as well with your Canvas feature. There is Devin. There's so many tools out there now for coders and I think Google wants to make a play here, and I think that's a good idea because I think this model will offer a lot of different interesting advantages compared to the models of these other companies. And then you have this last one here, which is a Collabs data science agent, which will create notebooks for you. So this is for data scientists, right? And this is also powered by Gemini 2.0. Developers can get early access to this new feature by joining the Trusted Tester Pro program before it rolls out widely. If you want more details, you can also check out this page this website from DeepMind, Google DeepMind, Gemini 2.0. There's a lot more details here. There's some examples, what's coming, agents, some example of that as well. There's information about performance and you know how do you get started with building with Gemini 2.0 Flash. And you can check out all the examples here. Anyways, that would be it for this video. Thank you for watching.